Because atoms have electrons going around, which forms current loops, they behave like tiny magnets. And as a result, they have magnetic moments. But here's the question we wanna try and answer in this video. Just like in charges, we've seen they are quantized and they have a minimum value of E, the charge of an electron. And charges have to be an integral multiple. Any charge you think of has to be an integral multiple of the charge on an electron. The question is, is there something similar for the magnetic moment of an atom? Does it also have some fundamental minimum value? Do these magnetic moments also obey the quantization principle? It has to be some integral multiple of that minimum value? Well, that's exactly what we wanna find out in this video. In a previous video, we saw that if you take the simplest atom, an electron going around a proton, it behaves like a tiny magnet, and the strength of that magnet, the magnetic dipole moment, is given by this expression. It basically says that magnetic moments come from angular momentum. In fact, they're directly proportional. More angular momentum gives you more magnetic moment. And the reason why we, well, I'm putting an O over here is to remind us that this is due to the orbital motion, because along with that, we also saw electrons tend to have a spinning motion, spin angular momentum, although they're not really spinning around their own axis, we can think of it that way, and that generates an additional spin magnetic moment, which we're not gonna talk about too much in this video. And so our main question is, does this magnetic moment have a minimum value? And if it is, what is that? Now before we get to that, we'll get to that in a second. But before we do that, I just want to focus on this number over here. What does this number represent? If you think mathematically, this number is just the ratio of magnetic moment and the angular momentum, right? And we give a name to this number. So this number is often called the gyro. I'm just mentioning because you may hear it somewhere. It's called the gyro magnetic magnetic ratio. All it is saying is that it's the ratio of magnetic moment and angular momentum. In fact, you know, it should have been called magnetogyric ratio because you know, moment is magnetic moment is coming in the numerator and the angular momentum is coming to the denominator. But never mind, it's just a name that we give and what's the significance of that? It's basically, this number tells us how much magnetic moment you get for a given angular momentum. For high gyro magnetic ratios, you get more magnetic moment for a given angular momentum. And this value would be different for spin magnetic moment of electrons and it will be have a, a different value for spin magnetic moments of protons and neutrons, even they have magnetic moments. But you can immediately see that because protons have a higher mass, protons and neutrons have a higher mass, their gyromagnetic ratio would be much smaller than that of electrons. Meaning we can immediately see that the protons and neutrons will have much tinier, much smaller values of magnetic moments compared to that of electrons. And it's for that reason, most of the magnetism that you see in nature is due to electron spin, not the spin of the protons and the neutrons. All right, with that out of the way, we can now go back, come back to the main question, does this have a minimum value? And for that, we have to ask, does the angular momentum have a minimum value? Well, how do you calculate angular momentum of electrons going in circles? Well, angular moment of any particle going in circle is given by MVR, where M is the mass, mass of the electron here, V is the speed of the electron, and R is the radius of that circular path or, or of the orbit. So here's the question. Does, should this have a minimum value? Well, no, right? I mean, our, our uh, electron should be allowed to orbit as close as possible. R should be able to have any small value it want, any arbitrarily small values it wants. So there's, there is no reason why they should have a minimum value, at least when you think using Newtonian physics, right? But the problem is atoms do not be, atoms do not obey Newtonian mechanics. Newtonian mechanics is an approximation that works at the large scale. So to really deal with atoms, we need quantum mechanics. And I know, quantum mechanics has a reputation for being all complex and vague and abstract and whatnot. But what we'll do in, in this video is we'll limit ourselves to Bohr's theory. See, Niels Bohr was one of the pioneers of quantum mechanics and he came up with you know the earlier versions of quantum mechanics and we'll only restrict ourselves to that. So let's go to Mr. Bohr, Niels Bohr, and ask him what he has to say about it. Bohr says in his Bohr's theory, and we'll learn more about this in when we learn about atoms. So Bohr's theory says that in an atom, 
He only talks about hydrogen-like atoms, atoms which have only one electron, so it's perfect for our, our atom over here. So his theory says, or he postulates, that the angular momentum of these electrons should have a minimum value. We're not gonna ask why, we'll not get into all of that, we'll just hear him out. So he says, should have a minimum value, and he gives us what that minimum value is. He says that the angular momentum of this electron cannot be smaller than h over two pi, where h is the Planck's constant. And there's more to this theory. See, this is the minimum value, right? But electrons can have more than this if they want. They can be in higher orbits, that will give them higher angular momentum. But again, there are conditions. You cannot have any higher values you want. Bohr says you can, the next higher value available for electrons is twice this number the next higher value would be three times this number. So in general, any angular momentum that the electrons have due to their orbital motion has to be an integral multiple n times h over two pi. So where n is an integer. So this has to be an integer. And so does this answer our question? So do you think that magnetic moments should have a minimum value? According to Bohr's theory, yes. According to quantum theory, yes. And we can now figure out what that is by substituting it over here. And I can do that, and then you can do that as well, so why don't you pause the video and see, substitute and see what that minimum value turns out to be. All right, let's substitute. So I get magnetic moment, mu zero, and by the way, now that I'm seeing this, we have used mu naught before as permeability. Here we're not talking about permeability, we are using the same symbols I know. But here we are talking about magnetic moment, and O stands for orbital, okay? Sorry for the confusion. But anyways, that equals, and I'm not gonna look at the vector signs anymore, we only worried about the magnitudes, right? So that's going to be E divided by two Me, that's the gyromagnetic ratio, times the angular momentum, we'll use the quantization condition, nh over two pi. And so if we put it all together, we get the magnetic moment has to equal, I'll keep that n out, because that's the integer, so it has to be an integral multiple of what? an integral multiple of E in times H divided by four Me pi. So let's write that, four Me times pi. Which means the smallest value you can have is when N equals one, and that is this number. So that is the smallest, this is the smallest magnetic moment we, ha we can have. This is very similar to how in, in electric charges we have Q equals Ne, where E represents the smallest charge and Q has to be an integral multiple of that. Same, same is the uh, case over here. So the question now is, what is this value? Well, you can substitute the value of E, H, and Me and pi, all these are known constants, and I'll not do that, I'll just tell you what the value turns out to be. If you substitute, this turns out to be nine point, roughly three times 10 to the power minus 24, a very tiny value. And what's the units? Now at first you might think, oh my God, so many units I have to substitute, but don't worry, it's magnetic moment. We've seen magnetic moment is current times, amp current times area. So current is amperes times area is meter square. So this is the smallest magnetic moment ever, according to Bohr's theory and we give a symbol for that, we call that mu b. We call that Bohr magneton. And just like when we're dealing with very tiny charges, we talk in terms of e's. We say one e or plus three or minus four e or something like that. When we're dealing with magnetic moments, we talk in terms of Bohr magnetons. We say it has one Bohr magneton or it has two Bohr magnetons. And according to Bohr's theory, we cannot have 3.5 Bohr magnetons. That's not allowed. But remember, this is only orbital magnetic moment. Similarly, we have spin magnetic moment. But the beautiful thing is it turns out that even spin magnetic moment for electrons happens to be you know, pretty much one Bohr magneton. So if you calculate the spin magnetic moment of electrons, you get pretty much the same number, one Bohr magneton. So long story short, because angular momentum is quantized and has a minimum value, magnetic moment also automatically becomes quantized. You can only have integral multiples of this minimum value, and that fundamental minimum value happens to be this number, which we call a Bohr magneton.